what's up block fam today is an interesting episode because i am not blockhead it is justin iron j moto and on today's episode you get to hang out with me and chris today is going to be an interesting video because we got my bike on the lift if you guys follow me on instagram recently i had put a new exhaust and an air cleaner on my bike and i did not put a map on the bike just yet i already knew chris was going to dyno tune my bike but that leads us to today where we are going to go ahead and compare a few maps for tuning a stage one like probably a lot of you that have bought used bikes in your life you acquire a motorcycle and you don't know the history or you don't know the true history of it right which like, was me i just bought this bike two years ago off the showroom floor <laughs> i actually didn't even ask questions yep and there's there's nothing wrong with that but you know it had did it have a high flow on it or was it stock it had a screaming eagle high flow but it had slip-ons okay so what you basically changed the intake and the pipe yeah and you're unsure if it had a stage one download yeah or i didn't if it know had a dyno tune you didn't know anything nothing so what we're gonna do we're gonna use power vision on your motorcycle but first first and foremost we're going to extract what you have right now first first we're gonna make a poll we're gonna see what it looks like right using power vision we're going to put in the stock improved map then we're gonna use the stage one um pre-built maps and we're gonna go through their selection process and we'll put that in and we'll pull that as well and then we're going to dyno tune it and when we're done each each stage we're going to compare numbers they make it bigger and they make it smaller right. uh, it doesn't matter that's not what's important here what we're going to do is we're not looking for the biggest gains um in the in the can map section right because it doesn't matter what we're going to look at is in the end the dyno two numbers and then we're going to compare the the graph right the the look of the power curve as well as what you feel because right. some things are going to happen that don't show up on a dyno sheet right so anyways in a nutshell that's that's right. what's going down and i here. think it's interesting because a lot of people don't typically dyno tune a stage one correct nope very rarely but should people do I've that i've probably only done maybe 20 or 30 of those in my career and that, I, that might sound like a lot but that's a small right. number compared to the amount of dyno tunes i mean what are your thoughts on dyno tuning a stage one um honestly i dyno tune my bike i mean I, I like what i like and if you have electronic throttle it just benefits you to have it dyno tuned. no other way to say it it you have to you have to experience it to really know right because everything about your bike changes it becomes much more crisp much more right now it gets rid of that um what they throw what they call a throttle progressivity or what we would call a throttle delay right it's not exactly a delay and if anybody refers to it as a delay it's not an accurate statement but it's close enough for argument's sake what actually happens is it stalls out your throttle position or your throttle open so for example if i go half throttle it's programmed that the butterfly won't open any more than let's just say 30 percent mm -hmm. and even when i get the three-quarter throttle it's only open now about 50 percent and then when i'm 100 percent throttle it might open to 85 interesting so it's not a delay right it's it's controlled throttle is what it is right so that if i were riding down the road and i don't know i mean we're making stuff up here as it go but let's say i'm riding down the road and uh i don't know um a bump there's a bump in the road and i'm like oh shit. and as i hit that bump you know sometimes you it the, makes you yeah you're yeah. like whoa and then if it goes instantly you're gonna it's gonna get real hurt you right. jerky on you that's designed as that momentary like oops factor right so if i went like that it's not going to change my throttle position at all right i probably won't even feel it if anything it'll just go uh, and just right. slow down i'm going to tune it so that if you went whoops it would go whoops right nice. with you. right i mean <laughs> I really who wouldn't want that i want I really full control <laughs> to explain that and i, <laughs> right, I right. know i look stupid doing this no no, no. i mean it makes sense though and, and again if those are things that you you kind of have to experience to fully understand if you haven't experienced it it's it's a, a little bit difficult to imagine that unless you already know what i'm talking about right so. right right just to save you guys a comment in the comment section i went with an sns grand national two to two pipe it's a pretty awesome pipe it does have a crossover in the header pipe and then i also went with this arlen s 
monster sucker something like that the 90 degree one i'm gonna let chris get the o2 sensors on and then we'll meet you guys in the dyno room um for the first initial pulse let's just start with what's in it and then we'll go through how to find what you need and where to go awesome hell yeah Sorry, Where you're sitting is actually not a bad number considering you have a 107. I mean, we got 10604. Now that's a sixth gear pull. Your red line's at 5200, and I believe your top speed is set at 116, I think is what I saw. That's why it's cutting off short but your torque would never really surpass that. So you're already starting to fall off. Right. So that's a good number, 106, that's, that's realistic. So what we notice is there's a dip here. Not a bad one at all. And be honest with you, that's, I mean, it's within 10. I would be okay with that. All in all, that's not a bad number. Let's move on. Let's oh. get a power vision map in it and see what that looks like. And then we'll get the stage one power vision map and see what that looks like. Oh yeah. And then we'll dyno tune it and we'll see what that looks like. So when you guys are on DinoJet's website and you guys are going to download a map, essentially you're gonna find yourself in a typical situation like most of us where there's not gonna be an exact 100% map to what your setup is. So it's kind of a juggle of finding what you would think is the closest to your setup. But for this run, we're gonna go ahead and do, we're doing the stock improved one. We are starting with the stock improved map. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into the Dino Tune run of what Dino Jet's stock configuration. It just says stock improved. So we're gonna see what that pulls out of the bike. Think it's gonna be any better? <laughs> it's like going to Vegas. Oh. Right. <laughs> so this had stock speed limiter in place. This one does not. Oh. And this one, I believe, we'd have to hope, I'd have to look at it, but I think this one runs out to. 6,000 or possibly 5,800. And if it runs 58, that's that's why it's cutting off right there. Right. We don't need to run it any higher because you don't have any power happening here. As a matter of fact, your max power is right in here. Hence why this that's a pretty good cutoff point for it. It's not right. building anything beyond that. Right. But we did gain, I mean, if you want to split hairs here, we gained one foot pound of torque. If we go even with our worst, we're still one full foot pound of torque and our worst horsepower were, what, two over. So we gained two horsepower and one foot pound of torque right. with just a drop-in map. All right, so now we're gonna put in the, the map where now it's in consideration with an exhaust and an air cleaner. Again, that was the run with, I guess the stock improved is what DinoJet was calling it. So now we'll see what the numbers come up with in regards to a stage one geared map. is 108 and a half 84 and 8.82 horsepower is pretty consistent there at about 84 and a half so if anything we can say we gained one horsepower and about one foot pound of torque at best <laughs> right so between the two not much changed you can see how the horsepower kind of increased here at the end at least in the green and the orange i know the orange is highlighted but if you can pick that out the green is chasing it it's so close to it you can can't even see it that's real good that means they're all tight they're all consistent nice they're all pretty much the same same power we'll see now what we get when we down the tune it like i think i told you i don't foresee that we're going to gain a whole lot we might see a, a little bit of gain right. but, but it's not going to be like so big we're going to be like oh sh mom check this out you right know what I mean? now so, although there might not be much of a gain you think we could still like there's limitations on things that we could oh yeah. potentially throttle progressivity is going to change like i said what you feel is gonna change significantly. Right. Even if the numbers don't grow that much, which again, I, I don't I don't see them growing much at all. But regardless of what the number ends up at, 
you're gonna feel the difference immediately. All right, so there you guys got it. That was running through whatever was in my bike versus the Dino Jet stock and improved map as well as their stage one map. So it's the end of our day here and what we're gonna do is roll the bike off, go home and then come back in the morning and then Chris will focus only on dyno tuning my bike and then uh and then we'll see where we land after that so we'll see you guys tomorrow and in your case we'll see you guys back in just here in a second all right and we're back, we're back. oh my god Woo! big energy from this guy we are back here it's the next day on to the final run chris is gonna go ahead and now dyno tune my bike after which was obviously yesterday we went through all of those maps number one thing i'm looking at is this we're gonna see if we can work that out and at least have that a smooth line. If not, I don't think we're gonna get any increase. As a matter of fact, I know we're not because it's a stop cam. Right. But if we can help fill this, what I call belly, we just fill that up a little bit. That's gonna help. Um, and then hopefully this this will come up a little bit higher. We're gonna shoot for 110. Like that's an optimistic goal. I'm thinking 110, 111 on a stock cam. Nice. Uh, your horsepower, I'm not gonna get much more. I'll be honest, there's just no cam there. Right. We might increase it a little bit. We might, you know, bring this up just a smidge, but it won't be a whole lot. Right. So don't expect big gains here. We're gonna try to fill this and we're gonna change how the power is delivered to you, the right. rider, Perfect. more than anything. overly exciting which I didn't really think we were gonna get anything overly exciting but so the can map gave us 108 and a half and the tune gave us 110 and a half so we increased two horsepower we increased two you notice your power carries out a little bit smoother as I said we were gonna flatten that you know that fell off the hill faster right. this one doesn't quite fall off the hill we didn't really pick much up out of here as a matter of fact, we have the same, pretty much the same, but that's a characteristic of the exhaust most likely. Now, this isn't anything you're gonna feel dramatically. Like I said, we weren't looking for the biggest increase in the world. Uh, we're just gonna explain, and you're gonna explain once oh, you ride it, right. what the difference is. Because it's, again, this isn't something that we even usually sell. I don't typically sell a stage one right. uh, with a dyno tune. Right. We should just put a cam map because as you can tell, they work pretty good. Right. Just stock, stock cam, stock everything else, it works pretty good. Right. Um, it's once you go in to start, you change your cam, uh, you change your exhaust drastically, you put on a big intake, throttle body, injectors, engine size, so on and so forth, that's where you really need the dyno tune. Right. And you'll definitely see the most increase. Right. So. There it is in a nutshell. Let's pull it down. I'm going to stick you out on the road and, yeah. and you tell me how it goes. Awesome. So now that I have Chris's tune, I can now compare that to whatever I had in it before. And then I'll uh, I'll jump on the road here and then uh, kind of give you guys a really quick thoughts and impressions of how it feels and how it rides. the jump i could definitely say that the bike definitely feels more responsive in the throttle i mean even right now i'm just like in fifth gear cruising and obviously doing like a first gear pull it definitely does feel stronger than what i had previously but oh look at that view let's uh jump on the highway up ahead and we'll see how the bike performs kind of uh at highway speeds so typically cruising at this speed i'm going 88 i'm on the highway around a little over 3k rpms and with my previous map i know that this is where it lacked the most it seems a lot stronger i kind of feel like my exhaust is even a little bit more growlier yeah. <laughs> 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 Woo. well there you got it was able to cruise around town really quick do a couple quick pulls and get on the highway I will say that the overall power definitely feels the same. It does feel like it is a little bit more stronger in the gears. 
So I do want to say that the way that the power is delivered to the bike is definitely a big difference. The overall power experience of the bike does feel the same. Let's go ahead and jump back to the dyno room with Chris and kind of close out our thoughts here um, in regards to everything that we just did with the stage one map shootout, I guess you could call it. All right, back in the dyno room. And now you guys know my first thoughts and impressions on it. I do feel like the throttle response is stronger, but again, the overall experience feels just the same in regards to the, the overall power. Stage one, can map versus dyno tuning, there's not a whole lot of difference power-wise. And we kind of proved that. You know, I think what we started at your best was 106. So you now have 110, so you gained four. And your horsepower, you gained six from 81 flat to almost 87, 87 flat. Yeah, so, right. But where you really gained was, again, your throttle, called your throttle progressivity, as well as um, now you're not limited on speed, whereas before you couldn't go any faster than that in this gear. You know, your red line was 40, about 4,400, give or take, but it was really your top speed limiter that was cutting off. Right. So I think that's that's pretty standard for how this goes. Right. So really, is it worth it? Uh, not really, not dramatically, unless you want better throttle response. Right. If you want to change, if you want me to correct your AFR, maybe richen it up a little bit, but lean it out in other areas so that you can get um, like highway cruising speeds. Right. Your fuel mileage can come up. Um, anyhow that's it in a nutshell yeah and then beyond the stage one that's probably when you want to start getting into actual the yes, dyno tuning does make a difference definitely. so i hope this episode was insightful for you guys uh again if you guys need any dyno tuning or want to come to the shop and get some service head to blackheadgarage.com fill out the form and we'll get to you guys if it was insightful if you guys have any questions leave it in the comments below give us a thumbs up because it does help youtube recommend the channel to other viewers and uh i'm not as good as blackhead at this but yeah Ride safe, like, comment, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, y'all. Um, ride safe, stay vigilant. Till next time, peace. <laughs>